Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, today we are starting a new topic difficult for engineers which is human error. So, today's topic is human error, its classification and causes. So, what are the things we will be discussing in half an hour to 40 minutes of time? So, we will start with basic elements of production system and then human contribution in production. Then uh, if you want to make a production system safer, so what are the controls that you should adopt? Then with these two um, important issues discussed we will go for human error and we start with generic definition of human error, then some working definition, then classification of human error, then uh, we discuss the causes very broadly and some of the brain bottlenecks, finally generic error modeling system. So, the lecture material was prepared with the help of uh, many books, primarily the book written by uh, James Reason uh, that is Human Error in 1990. And then <coughs> other books like Probabilistic Risk Assessment and Management for Engineer and Scientist by Komamutu Henle, then Risk Anal Analysis, Method Theory Methods Application by Marvin Rausant. So, some other uh, articles also we have considered and those those references or those sources I have uh, given it under references. So, being a very difficult topic, <coughs> so I, I will try to give you as much information as possible related to, the, to this. Some of the things you require uh, practice to understand means some kind of projects you require to do to go get into the detailed um, explanation and conceptualization of many of the uh, many of the concepts. I will try my level best to give some justice to this lecture. So, <coughs> this is what is the um, element of production and as well as the human factors consideration and that this was taken from James Reason 1990 that human error book. So, here you see this 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 is the production part production system. Okay. So, any production system <coughs> the basic purpose is ultimately you will be producing products it may be uh, end products, it may be intermediate items final for final product. And then this production system requires a organization and in this organization there will be from the top to bottom there is a hierarchy. For example, you will find out that in the broadly if you consider then you will find out that the top level uh, decision makers uh, who are maybe the your CEO or managing director and vice presidents and also independent in charges. Then immediately below to that who will be uh, looking into the implementation of the decisions or strategies that uh, that uh, are prepared by the decision makers. So, they are called line management. 
then ultimately the line management job these are at the at the soft floor level uh, that will be in the day to day execution will be done by the workers okay <clears throat> so then we can say that the long term strategic decision makers then middleman line management who will basically implement all the strategies and decisions and then workers who will actually do the work okay so with this with this uh, or, uh, simple structure i want to i want to discuss this first one is the production system which is developed uh, based on actually the plant is also developed uh, taking external inputs and different goals are set and accordingly finite resources are are hired or borrowed and they are nurtured and finally used these are basically all those decisions comes under decision makers okay now then <coughs> those decisions when the line management implements these implementation through operation maintenance training there are so many line management functions so all those things will be will be done designated responsible group of people who are coming under line management and then what happened there can be error in the decision making there can be error by the line management so those things ultimately leads to accident and if i if i make the analogy between this and this whatever decision makers errors are to we say this is the fallible decisions these are all latent failure or we can say the root root causes now these decisions also enhance the enhance the error or the or the again the failures in the line management again line management may introduce some more failures so these are basically line management deficiencies so this is also a latent failure so so there are the definitely some of the latent failures here because of the fallible decisions and some may be added but you traditionally we say this is root cause this is the intermediate causes okay now these failures ultimately what happen or or successful operation is of this in terms of production if we see successful operation of this uh, this this lead to precondition which is amenable for product successful production what are the preconditions reliable equipment skilled motivated workforce competent people so many things ultimately leads to productive activities or it basically does the productive activities means integrating the component of the work system positively effectively that ultimately lead to the production and whatever may be the reliability is there in all these layers this is the root layer next layer followed by next layer next layer but there is possibility of um, possibility of because you are dealing with the production system there will be hazards so the decision maker or like the designer of the plan they also look into foreseeable hazards and some defenses are put this is these defenses are for successful production these are not directly contributing to production and that's why the dotted line is given but for successful production so this when i am talking about the production system like this side this is basically that if things go successfully things go well then you will basically get good production or you will produce now when we talk about safety we basically talk about accident so from accident point of view everywhere there will be 
whoever all the human being who are involved either at the decision making level or the knife management level or the workers level so there is possibility of human errors and these human errors is is basically in from when it is from the decision maker level it is latent failure from line management level it is latent failure latent means it is not when an accident has taken place immediately you cannot find out what is the fallible decision or what is the line management deficiencies so you require a systematic investigation procedure and then only through that an an, an inquiry and through which you will be finding out where in the what are the latent causes so <coughs> now i can say you just see that latent failures related to management line management means in the operation in the maintenance in the training whatever uh, that uh, implementation a procedure that should have been should have been prepared and followed there may be mistake okay so all those things what will happen this as successful work operation or a successful execution will lead to precondition for production unsuccessful execution will lead to psychological precursor of unsafe acts for example if your equipment is not reliable it creates a condition that breakdown or maybe if equipment is not safe it create a condition for for, for some unsafe condition unsafe conditions if the workforce is not not motivated or the workforce is not competent enough that also lead to many latent failures which are the precursors of unsafe acts for example your your time schedule or the work schedule is bad it is it creating overload the time given for work is less it it create over pressure pressure time or you want to produce uh, more than what is uh, what is basically recommended that is over pressure over production situations so all those time pressure over production overload all the similar kind of things Mm, or maybe that unreliable equipment or unmaintained uh, maintained system so all those things are basically precursor to unsafe acts okay if these things is uh, not done properly then overload job pressure job stress uh, uh, time constraint uh, over production so many things ultimately it will lead to what happen unsafe acts and when there is an accident takes place so you will find out this unsafe acts are very easily to identify and that because they are active so that been from this fallible decision line management deficiencies psychological uh, precursor unsafe acts all those are basically latent it is not immediately visible but unsafe acts and active failures and uh, okay unsafe act is basically immediately seen when you because one way or other it is possible to relate to uh, to the accident or whatever happened to some people okay now <laughs> there can be there can be what happened there are basically it is because why unsafe acts and accident takes place it is because of inadequate defenses active failures and latent failures are result of uh, here you are talking about the defense proper defense here we are talking about inadequate defense inadequate defense for all for these kind of fail latent failures as well as active failures so there should be fallible decision should not have been taken line management should not create a situation that where over pressure or job stress will be created so if it is done or created then you must know that there is a failure of the defenses or barriers whatever way you can say so this <laughs> by by from this explanation what i wanted to put in front of you that that human errors can occur not only at the worker level it it it, it occurs at all levels when but their activities that their their responsibilities that their um, actions are different but it can happen so as a result 
if you analyze accident and you will find out that 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 they are at in some any one some of the levels in the organization there is human involvement and that human I mean human error is committed. So as a result it is very easy to I, I cannot say easy but I, I want to tell you that it is possible to relate relate accident to human error. But unfortunately what happened that we relate accident to human error and those humans are basically the workers who are working at the sub floor level. But that should not be the proper analysis that is not the proper analysis that should not be the proper way of doing things. Because any accident precursor are basically when you consider the latent failures are very very important it, it these are all long term and uh, issues and they have large impact in terms of accidents. By saying this I am not saying that the worker level uh, that a failure should not be considered that are the first step because you are able to see them the unsafe acts and unsafe conditions what is there that is to be removed. Okay. So, if this is the case, so that mean <laughs> it, it basically propose a hypothesis like this any production system uh, whatever may be the um, level of protection there can be chances of accident and those accidents actually can uh, actually can be related to human uh, problem or human errors and that human are not necessarily at the worker level even at the up to the decision maker level. So, when thing errors are committed at the decision maker line management level and uh, that basically we are talking about the management level basically. So, accident if you analyze you can find out that 85 percent problem lies at the management level may be 15 percent at the at the sub floor level otherwise uh, so that mean you have to find out the human error across all levels when it is at the management level then they are high level errors and they are is basically uh, knowledge level issues but when at the at the at the worker level it may be the skill and rule level errors okay so all those uh, things we will try to uh, find out So, now uh, based on this the reason has given this this diagram where it is said that that basically the decision maker and line management deficiencies this basically from there he has, he has derived this failure types as per he, his reasoning uh, that source type. So, that means the fallible decision is the source and because because the line management actually implement the strategies and decisions made by by the decision makers so they basically line management talks about line functions so they are these failures are function types failures so source type failures leads to function type failures and then what happened then another important uh, terms he has used that is failure tokens these are failure types and failure tokens because the precursor to unsafe act or unsafe acts what is committed by the worker at the sub floor level uh, are the condition what is created at the sub floor level they are failure tokens. So, and it is because of the deficiencies of the line management and the line management deficiencies again is basically because of the fallible decisions. So, now as a result what happened if you want to control all those deficiencies or you want to remove errors or recover from errors. So, you require to get feedback from across all levels first feedback will come once you have any accident takes place. So, that accident will give you feedback to the decision maker. Okay, so so, that means accident if you analyze there is uh, one week lecture on accident and investigation and analysis there I will show you that if you analyze the accident you will be finding out many reasons of accident and those reasons may be uh, great input to the 
decision makers okay then you have unsafe you will find out several unsafe acts now i am not going into telling what are those acts i have already discussed earlier classes so those unsafe acts there will be checklist for unsafe act that checklist will be input here then similarly the precursor like overload time pressure production pressure so many things those things will ultimately another feedback loop and then line management deficiency is also feedback loop please please remember that actually all those feedback loops they are basically input to the fallible decisions so because this is the source so here if we if we improve subsequently if we will definitely remove the problems okay now with the the with that background we i'll give you some uh, that definition of human error that also we have taken from the same book by uh, james reason okay so what it is said suppose what reason said about the error he said that error is a generic term to encompass all those occasions in which a planned sequence of mental or physical activities failed to achieve its intended outcome so all those occasions planned sequence of mental or physical activities fail to achieve the intended outcome and when these failures cannot be attributed to intervention of some other chance agency okay so that means suppose you have uh, you, you you have a, a task or a particular work to be completed and you know that what is the, the why this work is needed and what is the ultimate outcome if you complete the work so there may be some kind of physical activities or some kind of mental activities are involved so you may find out that there will be occasion so in those activities are not performed or the planned uh, they are not planned as uh, as required and then if you analyze those uh, outcomes you may find out that there is no intervention of any agency involved for those fallible outcomes then those occasions are coming under human error and accordingly you uh, you can classify the human error okay so these are basically reason says these are the errors now if it is when human involvement is there that is human error then another that nuclear regulatory board given another definition an out of tolerance action or deviation from the norm so out of tolerance actions or deviation from the norm where the limit of acceptable performance are defined by the system okay so what they further said that this situation arise problems in sequencing timing knowledge interface procedures and other sources so this is what is the definition now obviously these definitions are not straight forward one to one you have to have a case and then you know that what are the what are the Uh, ultimate out uh, end objectives or goals and what are the procedure to achieve those adjectival goals and whether they are performed correctly or not those things you have to consider for example you we ha you have seen the pressure tank system so in the pressure tank system pressure tank system i think you know this thing system in the pressure tank system what is the ultimate goal end goal is what that this tank will be tank will be filled with required amount of gas and those this gas will be that the storage gas will be used by some other equipment now when you are filling the gas 
it should there should not be over pressure condition and the tank rupture should not take place from accident point of view so that mean before well over pressure condition you will you will close the pumping if i consider the system is this much only so there are sequence some step sequences starting from the uh, that means the timer setting the timer then running for a preset time if uh, and then that will be no, uh, that will normal condition and then some cases the timer may not work alarm will sound operator will intervene so the operator intervention will will uh, and there are many issues we have discussed earlier so that mean there is some physical activities some mental activities involved so there can be out of control actions okay or or some unplanned actions so those things ultimately will be treated as error okay now let us <coughs> let us see that uh, what you know, the what is the basically uh, how do we classify the errors or uh, some other further description of uh, understanding the human error as i told you that there will be definitely prior intention to act if i consider the operator in this pressure tank system and if i consider that operator role only this only one aspect i am discussing that when alarm sounds operator will see the pressure gauge and then alarm when alarm sounds alarm sounds when there is over pressure condition it is it is basically more likely but from operator point of view alarm sound he will check the pressure gauge and then accordingly if the pressure is high he will basically open the contact open contact so what is the what is the ultimate uh, intention that over pressure condition should not arise okay over pressure condition should not arise now <coughs> now what happened that is means prior intention is tank should be filled below the desired just uh, below the desired just below the desired pressure that is what i am saying just below over pressure conditions and and to protect the over pressure condition so that tank rupture will not take place this is the system so i am talking about this system not the entire tank pressure tank that pump all those things okay so that mean we have prior intention and we have also test the pan state alarm sound pressure check pressure gauge when you operator must listen to alarm must check the pressure gauge and then contact this so we have intention intention will be time pump will be stopped because once contact is opened the current to pump will be stopped and pump will cease running no more Uh, flow or no more gas input to the our this uh, tank that is the case so definitely there is intention fine yes or no if there is no intention so then they are involuntary and spontaneous subsidy actions so this is not uh, our part primarily uh, we are not interested but interest if you are interested please go through this book there is explanation so uh, i am cons considering the other part suppose okay intention was there means the planning was done that the for for over to protect over pressure condition operator will do this this and this there is a perfect planning let it be like this or the planning may be imperfect also suppose intention is there then did the action processed as planned mean sound be check and this it may so happen that operate suppose the operator should be there sir around but operator is absent but he should be there during this charging cycle 
then this is the why is absent it may be it is basically intentional one ok. So, <coughs> so in that case what happened we are not considering the those intentional issues man, man, oh, intention means the operator knows that or car knows that a person knows that these are this is the time you have to be there and you have to perform all those things. Suppose intentionally he is not doing some of the things then that will go to violations. Another one is that all the actions suppose did the action process as planned if it is yes that mean all those things done correctly then did the action achieve their desired end yes that means pump stops over pressure condition is arrested that is the successful action. So, there are two issues one is I have the operator has a particular goal to achieve and in order to achieve that goal there are some sequence of activities to be performed maybe somewhere it is physical activities somewhere it is mental activities but activities are performed and and desired goal is achieved that is the successful condition. There are another other part is that the operator knows that these are the activities to be performed, but intentionally or some other reasons that is known to the operator based. So, he has not done. So, that is the violation, but in between is that successful operation and violation there are human error. Okay. What are those human errors there? The plan is known plan is good that means intention is there is prior intention and accordingly intention is there per uh, intention means for successful action that is the case. Then the actions processed as planned if it is no mean these these things should be done, but it is not done means the actions required is not processed as per plan then and it is not intentional or it is not a violation then this is unintentional actions sleep or lapse because of maybe when alarm sound pressure gauge to be checked then open the contact it may so happen that alarm uh, forgot to uh, alarm sounds but and then open the contact without seeing the pressure gauge because pressure gauge will tell whether alarm may be fal false alarm. Pressure gauge is the second depends that to protect the false alarm situation also. So, in that case some steps is some step is to be done, but not done. So, now if it is a routine type of things and then he forgot to do or he have seen uh, forgot to do uh, there can be when this is not the action is not performed as per plan it will come under sleep or lapses. Lapse will be basically it is related to memory when it is not done because of forgetfulness forget because lapse from the memory otherwise it is sleep. Now, suppose ok planned are that actions are taken as planned but the desired desired uh, result is not achieved desired not not achieved achieved then what is the problem problem in the plan itself ok problem in the plan itself for example suppose pressure gauge of it is not planned so alarm sound open open the, the, uh, this one if i say that it is a pressure uh, over pressure condition it is, if it is correct oh and uh, and uh, action is also done that is a different that is the recover issue basically. So, what I mean to say here if there is a problem in the plan or the planning stage. So, this is basically planning error and this one is execution error. planning error and execution error ok. So, I hope that you you got some idea because there are there are basically um, from the regions classification point of view 
says that slip and lapses and then mistakes and then violations ok. So, <clears throat> how do you understand which one is slip, which one is lapse and which one is mistake? Which one is violation easy to understand and and which, what is correct action that is also easy to understand. So, in between successful action and violation there are errors in terms of slip and lapse, slip or lapse or in terms of mistake. When I say slip or lapse basically plan is correct you have all the steps, but you forgot to do it. Suppose you require to you for inadvertently press a um, press a button which is not to be done ok. So, that was uh, that was the uh, slip case ok. So, anyhow so there will be there is overlap between slip uh, slip and lapse and sometimes we also are mistaken uh, with the mistake and lapse all those things, but it is not as easy as I am telling here ok. So, but you have to carefully uh, understand it and create a create a, a case or example for it and then try to apply this concept what I am discussing now ok. So, then I will give you a working definition because that one was so uh, that one more psychological in nature, but here it is uh, from operator control room operator point of view control room operator model tesio it was given by Bello G and Colum Columbari B. Their model is like this that means there, there are few issues one is S, F and R what is S? S is the input received by the operator ok. Then what is a operator transfer function operator will once input is received operator will uh, use his brain and that processing mental process and then operator outputs means operator take action some response to the stimuli. So, with this three the uh, he has given they have given this kind of uh, definition human error occurs when the reply to input when the reply to input is other than best because there is given a stimulus there must be response and that response should be appropriate to the stimulus and there is a best response. So, what they are saying what they are saying that reply to input to other than the best and exceed acceptable limit it can happen in the following cases. The cases are what the operator does not understand S stimulus could not understand this and misinterpret it. He understand S that means stimulus correctly, but the relevant R is unknown he does not know what is should be the response. S is correctly understood R is known but outside the operator possibilities may be possibilities may be his competency may be beyond his reach or something like this. Then S is correctly understood R is known and within the operator's possibilities, but R is carried out wrongly response is not wrongly ok. So, four four different situations. So, I just I will relate this with the with this uh, pump uh, pressure tank example and then then we. So, what is there case 1 takes place when an alarm alarm sounds up alarm sounds up, but the operator does not notice it. So, this is the way I interpreted the things ok. So, it is not it is this example is not taken from this Bello and Columbari that from the Bello and Columbari this book I have taken the concept and then I put into the pressure tank example. So, you if you find that it is not correct you can you can raise in the discussion forum 
but anyhow i think it is correct so error in information so information problem why i am saying error in information here basically the the takes place alarm sounds up but upper drajan notice it it may be the alarm is not uh, that uh, sufficient enough to maybe the sound is not sufficient enough so error in information two case two takes place what is the case two error in instruction you just go back let us sorry what is the case two he understand s correctly when stimulus is the alarm correctly but relevant r is unknown, not known r is response is not known so first one stimulus could unders could not understand s second one understand s but response is unknown third one understand s response is known but the but the operator cannot do it fourth one understand s r is known and operator it is within operator possibility but done it wrongly four different cases so second case error in instruction the takes the play operator hears the alarm but forgot to stop the pump third case takes place when the operator is aware that he must stop the pump but does not have sufficient time to do so error in organization error in organization or error in decisional process so he hear this then check the suppose the check the pressure gauge and then he has gone for uh, gone for this one uh, removing the contact but this to entire process takes more time so that's why the over pressure condition is not arrested case 4 that takes place when the operator knows what to do and has sufficient time to do it but he press he press the wrong button so error in operation instead of maybe remo uh, removing the that opening the contact he might have press something wrong which which, which uh, ultimately does not uh, remove the contact okay so this is what is basically the definition of error and and the precursors so what we have we started with we have started with this with this so what we have completed i have given you this one i will given you this separate operation then generic definition of error and working definition of error okay so i hope that Uh, you you have understood this the cons primarily i have given you the concept with a one example and uh, you create your own example that i am requesting several time you create your own example so then essentially what i have discussed i said that we are discussing human error with reference to safety and primarily industrial safety where many people work and this human error contributes a lot to the accident because the human error is not only the operator's error it is error up to the strategic level the decision maker the boss of a company so in the organizational hierarchy starting from the from the top level management the line management and then the worker so everywhere there are different somewhere decision somewhere implementation somewhere execution so everywhere human involvement are there and there are errors so those errors can be uh, classified in uh, in different ways only one gen classification we have given in terms of that one is the intentional which is basically violation another and and in between violation and successful actions there are human error in terms of sleep or lapse or mistake sleep or lapse means when you do any activity or any work there is end goal and in order to achieve the end goal you have you have series of activities either physical or mental and or mental to be performed 
सपोज इन यू हैव कमिटेड कमिटेड एरर्स इन प्लानिंग ऑल दोज एक्टिविटीज देन दैट इज विल बी मिस्टेक बट सपोज द प्लानिंग इज करेक्ट बट द पर्सन हु इज एग्जीक्यूटिंग इट ही कमिटेड सम द स्टेप्स मे बी बिकॉज इट विल गो टू स्लीप और लैप्स वेन यू टॉक अबाउट लैप्स द मेमोरी कॉम्पोनेंट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज लैप्स फ्रॉम द मेमोरी एंड देन आई आई हैव गिवन यू एन अदर डेफिनेशन फ्रॉम दैट दैट रेस्पॉन्स स्टिमुली स्टिमुली रेस्पॉन्स मॉडल वट वॉट एपन देर आर फोर कंडीशंस वी क्रिएटेड दैट स्टिमुली अंडरस्टूड स्टिमुली नॉट अंडरस्टूड एक्शन टेकन करेक्टली एक्शन नॉट टेकन करेक्ट करेक्टली और रेस्पॉन्स करेक्टली रेस्पॉन्स नॉट करेक्टली ओके सो दीज आर द डिफरेंट वेज ऑफ बेसिकली अंडरस्टैंडिंग एयरस एंड विद रेफरेंस टू प्रेसर टैंक सिस्टम वी हैव ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इट द रेफरेंसेस एज आई सेट लिस्टेड हियर primarily region and then i have given you this belo cg and columbari b 1980 and there are few more references which will uh, the use of all those references will be seen in the next lecture thank you